Do I have any clue what is going on? No. I'm pretty sure that's like stalker 101 what not to do. It was a literal blood play. Like she was playing in blood. He murdered an entire family. <laughs> she gets horny from murder. That was some sexy, sexy sex scene right there. And then she murders him naked. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel and in this vlog I'm going to be reading what is supposedly the darkest romance series ever. So this is the Cat and Mouse duet by H.T. Carlton. It is a duet. There is also a prequel novella that does take place called Satan's Affair that I will be reading as well but I have so many friends who really adore this book series but also at the same time everyone's like oh my god it's like the darkest thing I've ever read. It is so crazy. It is nuts. Oh my god blah 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 blah. So I'm kind of like how could it like I get like things can be really dark and messed up and you can still give it five stars but I also feel like there's a lot of times where if a book is really that dark not everyone is really going to be giving it such high praise and so I feel like considering that everyone seems to like adore the shit out of this book there is a part of me that is kind of like maybe it's not that dark I don't know I don't want to say that and then like be completely wrong but Kind of the vibes I'm getting so I'm very excited to read this I'm got no I literally know nothing about it except for the fact that it is a stalker romance oh my light just went out so yeah I know nothing else about this part from the fact that it is a stalker romance that's it I will let you guys know what it's about as I read it and there will be spoilers as well on this vlog I'm gonna literally tell you guys everything as I read it so you know I'm gonna read this so anyone who doesn't like dark romances can know what it's about and if you have read and enjoyed it you get to see my play by play reactions so without further ado Let's get into it. Hello. Okay, so wanted to come on because wait, where is my Kindle? Hang on. Wanted to come on because I did start Satan's Affair like a little bit ago. I'm currently like 20% in. Um, do I have any clue what is going on? No, I have no fucking clue what I'm currently reading. This is the weirdest shit in the entire world. It starts off and she's just murdering someone. Flat out murdering hardcore, hardcore murder. Like hardcore. Like, this isn't even like mild murder. This is like straight up bitch is a crazy serial killer. I have no idea what the fuck this is. I mean, I went into this only knowing what the cat and mouse duet is about. Who are we following right now? Who is this crazy bitch who was just murdering people? She is part of like a traveling Halloween circus. You is like the haunted house part of it and she decorates it only 10 people at a time and she picks someone each time that she murders because they're a bad person. And, it's, and, and she gets off on it too. Like she gets horny from murder. Like she literally came from murdering someone on the dead body, which I'm pretty sure is necrophilia first off. But I don't understand who this chick is. I don't get how this is supposed to feed into everything. I'm so intrigued to be quite honest with you because there's no way this is our main girl in the series because why would she be? How does this bleed into everything? This shit's weird though, by the way. Like, if you've got any kind of triggers for anything, do not read this. Because she full on, like, scoops a dude's eye out. Like, oh. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually surprised that they're, like, all surviving this long. You know, from her murder. Like, when she's killing them. Like, they actually survive, like, a pretty solid amount. Like, she's actively sawing through him, right? Like, this dude. Like, she's sawing, like, through him. And he's still, still kicking and screaming. I mean... You gotta hand it to some of these people. Like they got, you know, you know. It's it gets fucked up. Don't get me wrong, but it is interesting because she only kills people that she thinks that demons and deserve it. So I don't know. <laughs> she just ripped his arm. I've read a scene like this before, which sounds really bad. But she just shoved a mace, like a baseball bat with spikes in it, up the dude's butt. She like legit ripped him a new one. Like she, when she took it back out, like everything came out. Okay, when I tell you guys that I'm sitting here right now and I am just like legitimately shook by everything that went down in this book, it was actually crazy. Like everything that you thought you knew about this within the last 20 pages just didn't even matter anymore. I'm, I loved it. I loved it. Did not expect that. Um, so the way this leads into the cat and mouse duet is you end up meeting Zaid, who is the guy in the cat and mouse duet. He, when the, when her Halloween carnival gets to Seattle, 
She meets him because she goes to go kill these guys who enter into her haunted house. But then Zayd also comes to the haunted house to kill these guys. And so the two of them end up killing all the people together. And from that, you end up learning that Zayd is killing them because these high ranking men um, apparently are part of this like secret cult society in Seattle where they first off kill and drink the blood of virgins to get initiated. All right. Um, and then also they are like pedophiles and they um, are the human traffickers and like literally any kind of what bad thing you can think about. That's what this secret cult society does. And so I see meet Zayd. Obviously, I think this actually takes place during the cat and mouse duet because of the fact that like he's, I think, with the girl at this point. I don't know who she is, but she was also in the haunted house, but gets out safely. Like He's there to make sure she's safe. And then, yeah, so I'm really excited to actually start the duet now. I do want to say, so the reason why my brain was like, what actually happened is because it ends and you find out that Sybil actually has schizophrenia and she made up her henchmen. The entire time these henchmen that she was actively talking to, that she was killing people with, that she was having sex with, she made them up. They were actually mannequins in the haunted house. My brain literally stopped and it like malfunctioned and it took like a hot second. For, oh, I was just, I was so shook. Everything was just turned right in its head. I did not see that coming at all. Like, wow. How, like, really good. I mean, I didn't like the sex scenes, to be quite honest with you. I actually skipped over a lot of sex scenes because they were just weirding me out. That was just not my kind of blood play or anything because it was, like, literal. It was literal blood play. Like, she was playing in blood while having sex, which is just not my kind of cup of tea. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have dinner now, but, like, shook. All right, so... <laughs> Hi, baby. I've just opened um, Haunting Adeline and it's got the kinks and stuff in it. Man, it's got the one that I actually really don't like. I mean, it's fine. Like, there's a lot of things I don't I mean, there's like legit like non-con in here. But Som Somnophilia is one that I've, I've read about this in other books before. I don't like this one. Uh, oh well, whatever. Hello, okay, so yeah, I'm on my lunch break for work. It's not the best weather outside, so I hope the natural lighting is okay. But I was too tired last night to update you guys as I started Cat and Mouse Duet, but I started it and oh my god, I'm currently, I want to say, I think I'm like 10, 15% in. I mean, it's like a six, it's almost 600 pages this book, but it's fine. I'm gonna get through it, but I'm like 15% in. I am loving it. The humor, the humor in this book, it's my kind of humor. If you don't like dark, decrepit humor, but also like really just bitchy, horny humor, like it maybe won't be for you, but I love bitchy, horny humor. Now, if you don't know what bitchy, horny humor is, basically our main girl, Adeline, there's this line in the book where she's like, I wish I had a bigger mouth so I could drink more alcohol right now. And then she goes, but I wouldn't say that out loud because then my best friend would be like, yeah, bigger mouth to fit more of that dick. <laughs> I was like, that was hilarious. What I can tell you now that I know what it's about. So you have Adeline. She is like a 20 something year old. She is a successful author actually. And her grandmother passed away and left her her house and Adeline has moved back into this house to live. And so she's back in her hometown, back in her grandmother's house. She's kind of renovating it currently. And one day she ends up finding a rose on her table. And then she continues to find roses inside her house, inside her car, in all these different places. And so she knows someone is stalking her. And so that's what's going on with her. And then you have the guy who we know is Zayd having read Satan's Affair. We know that. We have Zayd and he is trying to take down that criminal ring as I talked to you guys about earlier. But also he saw Adeline and he becomes like instantly, like instantly obsessed with her and is like, I want to break her. I want her to be like my mouse. Like she's the mouse, I'm the cat, she's my prey. Like instant obsession. And so that's what this is about. It's him doing like being creepy, leaving her roses places. And I'm really into it. Um, that's kind of all I know. We'll see how it keeps on going, but I'm really enjoying it so far. Obviously, like, I don't really know where it's gonna go from here, but it seems pretty good. Um, nothing too crazy, just a little bit of murdering so far and a little bit of stalking. So we'll see how it keeps on going. I will say, I, people, went on the Instagram yesterday and you know what I saw? I saw that we're getting a Sybil story. Sybil, Sibby from Satan's Affair is getting her own book and I could cry. I could cry. I didn't know she was getting her own book. Oh my god, I'm so excited. That means like she's not dead and she's gonna be, I don't know. 
Oh my god, I'm so excited. I mean, bitch is fucking nuts. I don't really know what her story's gonna be like, but I'm so excited. So, yeah, also just saw that um, the cat and mouse tour is like $14 on Prime at the moment. So I'm actually gonna buy a physical copy of the book just for funsies to have for now. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. I'm enjoying it. We'll see how it keeps on going. Um, hopefully nothing too much disturbs me, but we'll see. And uh, that's my first update from saying the cat and mouse do it. Not too dark so far. Let's see. I have a meeting in 15 minutes. <laughs> um, we'll see. I'm curious to see if it is going to be something that like really bothers me. Because I mean, you did see last night. I did show you guys that som 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 somnophilia does happen in this. I don't love somnophilia because I've read about it before. I don't love it. It's like my least favorite. But we'll see. Okay. I have to go back to work. Okay, so I've been like super, super tired this week. So I haven't really been able to read much. I think I'm like, I, for context, worked Comic-Con for like three days straight over the weekend. And so I think I just haven't like been getting enough sleep lately. So like every single night when I'm going to go to bed, I'm like too tired to actually do anything. So I'm going to go to bed now, but I read an extra 10% of the books. So I'm currently 21% in. So far he has murdered someone. <laughs> He murdered an entire family <laughs> because the guy hit on her. <laughs> I mean, the guy came from like a criminal family. This guy came from a criminal family, hit on Addie at a club. She took him home. He like went down on her. And so Zaid came in and murdered him and then sent her his severed hands in a box to her doorstep. And then murdered the guy's entire family as well. So, you know, lesson learned. Don't let a guy touch you. <laughs> Possessiveness, bruh. Good morning. So it is currently Saturday. I actually went up 27% last night of the book. And all I really have to say right now is the fact that this bitch, this bitch, I can't even. She sees him outside smoking a cigarette. She's like, oh my God, there's my stalker. You know what she does? She gets up, goes outside, pushes him and is like, why are you stalking me? Stop. And this man left her severed hands on her doorstep three days ago. And she goes, you know, it's a great idea. I'm going to go confront him. I'm pretty sure that's like stalker 101, what not to do. But, you know, up to her. I, I mean, I thought it was a absolutely hilarious, hilarious scene. Um, so I'm really enjoying it so far. My copy actually just arrived. It's downstairs. I'm going to go pick it up from my um, doorman and go grab that, which I'm super pumped about. Yeah, that's going to be it. And I'll catch you guys up later. Good morning. So um, I actually really did not read much yesterday. I read some of the book. Um, I will say I'm so excited because okay, I, got, I got a couple things to say. First, I'm very excited because they just mentioned Satan's Affair and the Halloween is coming up in a couple weeks, which means that Satan's Affair takes place during book one. I'm so excited to see like that whole scene with Zayd and Sibby, like it like, from Zayd's POV. I'm so excited for it. Like it's gonna be really good. Another thing is that oh, is the lighting okay? It's like really gross and dreary out for me. A couple things going on. Like I mentioned her, I think I mentioned that her grandmother, her great grandmother was being stalked and like was murdered in the house. I mean, maybe I didn't mention this. Her great grandmother was stalked and was also murdered in her house. And, and um, Adeline has found her diary and has been reading her diary about how she was in love with her stalker. And she thinks that the stalker maybe killed her great grandmother. I do not think it was the stalker. From the diary entry so far, I think, I think it was Frank. I don't know who Frank is, but Frank is being mentioned in the passages. And I think that whoever that guy is, is the one who killed her. Because her great grandmother was married to a man and then had a stalker that she fell in love with. And then she was murdered in the house and someone covered up the murder. And I think that it was Frank who killed her and John helped cover it up. That is my, that is what my thought is. Okay, that is my guess so far. That's what I'm putting my money on. Yeah, that's what I'm doing and I'll catch you guys up later. There's like a lot going on, like it's way more like suspense. I will say, look, it's not gonna be for everyone because there is a hella, hella CNC, um, dubious consent scenes in this. Like she's actually like, I don't want to be doing the do shit with him, but she's like, well, A, you know, when he was, you know, inserting a gun into her for JJ, she's like, she could be like, no, don't do that because he can probably shoot her for JJ. No one wants to be shot in the vagina, okay? No one wants that. And then like right now I'm in a scene where she wakes up and she's tied to the bed while she was sleeping and he's like on top of her. I'm like, oh, that's also not consensual. But 
She's also super into it. It's really weird because she's really into fear play. <gasps> we had a primal play scene. We had a primal play scene. <gasps> it was so good. I just couldn't be bothered like getting up to talk to you guys when I was reading these scenes because I was just like so tired and I had no energy. But there was a primal play scene where he chases her throughout the house. It was so good. And that's what ended in the gun play scene. But there was a primal play scene before that. And I love primal play. Okay, right, I need to go pick up my uh, bagel for real now. You know what I really appreciate about this is the fact of like... It's so interesting because she knows what he is. And I feel like quite often in a lot of these like serial killer or stalker romances, like the girl doesn't always know that the guy is a stalker or that he is a serial killer. But this is different in the fact like she knows fully what he is and that's what makes her all the more frustrated about everything and about being attracted to him and having this like kink of fear play and stuff because she even says at one point, I've been hiding the shit out of this by the way, but at one point she's like, this isn't my ascension to heaven, this is my fall from grace and the more I time I spend with him, the further and further into the pits of hell I go. And I'm just like, bruh, bruh, it's so interesting. And especially because his point of view as well, like he knows that he's not a good person. And like, he's not obsessed with her in the stalker way of like, he's doing these things and he's like, oh, like, it's fine that I'm doing this. Like, she's my little toy to play with. He's like, no, it is fucked up what I'm doing. Like, what I'm doing is not normal. And like, sure, it's not, like the best way to enter these things, but I want her to know me as I am at my worst, because if she just thinks who I am at my best, then what's the point of everything? Like, he even says, the only way I'll truly be able to keep her is if she sees me at my worst. I would rather just off myself than trick her into loving me as a good man just to leave me when she finds out that I'm the worst. And I'm like, I really like that. I think it's really interesting. Like really, really interesting. Like that whole like kind of, kind of just development between the two of them in a sense. So yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to point that out. Oh my God. He is 32 years old. I mean, I'm pretty sure she's 25 or 26, but he's 32. How did I not know this? It's always so weird to <laughs> what? Frank is Mark's dad, so Frank definitely killed Gigi. Now, if you're wondering who Mark is, as a reminder, Mark is the one of the four guys that Zayd kills in Satan's Affair alongside Sibby. So, currently, he is courting Mark to find out what Mark does know before obviously he does kill him at Satan's Affair and torture him. So we're kind of in that in-between period where well, I know he's going to die, but if you didn't read Satan's Affair, you don't know he's actually going to be, well, you can kind of guess he's going to be like ah, ah, murdered. But um, yeah, this just further perpetuates the fact I'm going to kill my whole mob idea with um, that whole stuff. I definitely think, I'm going back to my original thought, that it was Frank who murdered the great-grandmother and that the stalker had nothing to do with it. I've only got three hours left of this book. I'm reading this so slowly. I've just been getting super distracted lately. I don't know what it is, but I'm really liking the book. So yeah, no. Okay, okay, so I'm about to go make dinner because of the fact that I am just got to Satan's Affair night and I'm like, well, if I keep reading now, I'm just gonna keep reading and then it'll get to like even later and then I won't have dinner and it'll be like 11 o'clock by the time I eat and that's just ridiculous. So I'm gonna go eat dinner now. But I just read a scene and it was like, it was finally good to that scene where he literally comes in, he's just standing on her balcony and she's like, why are you just standing out there? Like, what are you doing? And she can tell there's like something wrong and he's like really dejected and she's like, come on, like get in bed with me. Like come lie down in bed. And it was like the sweetest thing because he's like, I lost someone tonight. Like he was, he's, you know, like he saves children from human trafficking and stuff and he wasn't able to, this girl died and he's like really torn up about it. And you know, when that happened, he came to come watch her basically to like, you know, he wanted a moment of peace and she's like, you know, it was like a really sweet, it was like their first like sweet note intimate like scene. And it was a scene where like she was really instigating everything between the two of them and like comforting him. And she was like massaging his back and like koala cuddled him. And I was like, oh, this couple, they're like, I mean, I know, I know he's like technically stalking her, but like, oh my God, he's so wonderful at the same time. And I just, I love him. Oh, it is, it's so hard to explain, but like, oh my God, I love the two of them. It was like, I can't even explain how much like that scene meant. Like it was that like caretaking scene that I feel like happens in a lot of dark romances, but the guy just becomes so overwhelmed with like something really shitty that happens. And the girl is just like, I'm here for you. And like, I'm here to be like that bright light for you. <sighs> okay, time to go have some curry. It's Sibby, it's Sybil, the broken doll. She's dressed as a broken doll. That's her. And look, it even says that it's talking about her playhouse. Oh my god, that's hers. I cannot wait to see her. I just have to say, I am enjoying this immensely right now. <laughs> it's, it's so great seeing it from his point of view with like Sybil. Because <laughs> the best thing is 
when he's actually going to try and kill Mark and the three guys, and he's like, this is it, I've got it. And then Sibby just like pops up and he's like, this fucking nuisance. He's like, oh my god. And she goes, God has nothing to do with it. Oh my god, I lo <sighs> This is so good. Oh, oh my god, I've gotten to the House of Mirrors scene. I feel like I see everyone always talking about, oh, the House of Mirrors, House of Mirrors. Like, that's like the big scene in this duet that everyone's like, oh, that scene is so amazing. I got to it. I'm so excited. Hello. You want to come say hi? You want to come say hi to everyone? She hit all. Wah, 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 wah. Hit all. <laughs> um, hello. Okay. Oh, God, it's me, child. All right, anyway. Oh my God, the house mirrors. That was so hot. That was actually really freaking hot. Like that was some sexy, sexy sex scene right there. Do I think it would have all been very comfortable? No. And then we got the scene where he and Sibby are murdering people together and he's like interrogating Mark and kills Mark. Oh, it was so good to see it from his point of view and like his whole thought for Sibby and kind of what was also interesting was you got to see the fact that like she was like having like a psychosis, like a psychotic break and that like, she doesn't actually, like, she make, like, has schizophrenia and was seeing these people that no one else was seeing and that she was basing them off like the mannequins that were yet there and you saw the mannequins like in the dot, like it was crazy. Definitely, definitely worth reading Satan's Affair before this because those Easter eggs, delicious. Anyway, I'm very curious how it's gonna go. I've got 20% uh, left, I'm 80% in at the moment. So I don't really know how this is gonna leave. I'm, I really don't, I'm so curious. Like, is it gonna end with her being kidnapped? Is she gonna try and like, leave? like what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Update, I did finish book one and I'm currently 10% into book two and I was like, I need to go to bed now. So the way that it ends is of course, you know, she does get kidnapped, <laughs> surprise. Um, and he ends up getting like backstabbed. He doesn't really because I remember Mark, Mark who we all love to hate, um, Mark who hashtag died. Um, his wife that Sibby let loose, turns out that his wife um, actually was the mastermind behind everything. Honestly, did not see that happening, did not see her coming. And I think that it is because she becomes even less significant when you're reading this book, knowing that she was just like let loose in Satan's affair. Like you were like, oh, she was there, like whatever, she probably doesn't mean anything. But the bitch did. There was a $12 million bounty basically put on Adeline. And while Zayd is trying to like bring down the pedophile blood drinking virgin ring, he gets backstabbed by obviously this wife lady and is almost killed and almost kidnapped. And at the same time that that's happening, Adeline gets kidnapped. And so she's currently kidnapped and is being held hostage. And he has just broken free from Claire and is now trying to track down Addy, but he's also like really fucked up and in hospital because he's like <laughs> almost dead. So that's where we're at, super fun. Once again, this did have a trigger warning in it at the beginning of this book, the second one for Somnophilia. But again, the last one didn't actually have Somnophilia in it. And it was funny because there was a scene where Somnophilia almost did happen. But he was like, no, I wanted to be awake when I fuck her. And I was like, yeah, great. Love that. I love when they're coherent, when they're having sex. Like, best thing for me. So I don't know. We're curious if that actually just happened. But um, that's where I'm at. I'm going to keep reading. Keep you guys updated. And yes. Oh, oh, I did want to quickly say, this is actually giving me super huge vibes of the Hades Quartet by Tate James, by the way. So if you're watching this vlog having read um, this Cat and Mouse duet, definitely go check out Tate James because my recommendation for you. Hello, okay, so I uh, went out tonight to get drinks with some friends and then I came back at 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> it is now two in the morning um, and I just read some of the book. All I wanna say at the 20% mark is that there is an on-page rape scene. Like there is, like, like Addie gets raped while in captivity from these people who kidnapped her and are planning to sell her off to sex traffickers, okay? So if an on-page rape scene is something that is a huge trigger for you, please do know that. That's all I can say is she's just in captivity. Apparently like, you know, it's like a really fucked up sex camp to be quite honest with you. Like there's like a madame there as well who was like getting her ready to be like the perfect sex slave and things like that. So we've had Addie's POV for the last couple of chapters and um, we'll just go back to Zayd's as he's trying to find her again. One thing that H.D. Carlton has said is the fact that like it takes a while for Addie and Zayd to be reunited in this book. And I'm very curious to see because like I feel like it's a 700 page book. Are you trying to tell me that it takes 400 pages for Addie to get fucking free? Oh my god. Like bruh. That's a long time. We'll see. I mean not only that but like if she's captive for 400 pages that's just going to be depressing shit to read. 
I don't want to read about a girl being sex trafficked for 40, 400 pages. Once again, not the darkest shit I've read, but like, you know, no one, you don't want to read about this poor girl. Oh, reminds me of Taken. Anyway, I need to take my makeup off and go to bed because I'm tired. <laughs> Hello, okay, so very exciting. I am now in Las Vegas. Um, yeah, my plans to, yeah, uh, you guys actually already knew that I was going to read it all in the airplane. Actually, I did not finish it on the airplane. I have exactly 30 minutes left of the book because I wanted to finish it and give like my, my whole final thoughts all at once. But I did read six hours worth of the book on the airplane and I fucking love it. I'm so obsessed with this so much. I love the second book even more than the first one. Maybe it is because I did read a lot of it all at once and I was just so into it. But you should have seen me, the poor guy next to me in the airplane. <laughs> at one point, I was like, <gasps> oh my God, because Sippy, Sippy arrived. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Sippy literally came back. So it takes, obviously, the Satan's Affair, because obviously Satan's Affair ends with Sippy killing her therapist and breaking out of prison. Oh my God, my hair is not great. Um, it needs to be washed, but with her breaking out of prison and killing her, well, she's in a mental facility, I think actually, because she's got schizophrenia, but it start. she comes back in when she breaks out. Um, what is happening is Zaid finds her and she's on the most wanted list and brings her to Addie's place and is like, here's Sibby. And they're like, oh my God, you brought the crazy doll chick. And he's like, we're looking after her now. And I was like, so excited. Did she murder everyone again? Oh, you're still you're right there. This is. I don't want to explain this book while you're here, because it's not. <laughs> well, I was coming out of the garage, but I realized it would make noise. No, you're fine. I just, I just feel like I was about to be like, this book gets in my dad's here. Actually, everyone loves you. You can come say hello. But I mean, people. I didn't get film ready though. No, you didn't have to, but this is just not a book that I was wanting you to listen about because it's about to get very messed up. <laughs> I don't like messed up. It's all like my books to make semi messed up things. Yeah. Um, but no, Sibby is back, and I was so excited when she came back in, and she does play a role like throughout the rest of the, like from I want to think it's like the sixty percent mark she comes in at, and oh my god love my girl so much but does she get back to her hardcore murdering yes is she having fun killing people 100 percent. and i'm very excited because as you guys know sippy is going to get her own book there's also another group of people that we found called the i think they're called like the basilic brotherhood and they're like this group of uh there's like these four brothers but they're not really brothers and they all have their own special like that this definitely reminds me a lot of Tate James when I think of the Bass Lake Brotherhood because I guess this is going to be a reverse harem series that um, she's going to end up writing for them. But they're these three or four brothers who run like on the black market like organs, like black market organs, but they don't actually because everyone thinks that they're these big scary black market organ profit. Oh, I don't know the word for it. Everyone thinks that that's what they do, but they actually save people from the black market. So people think that they're bad people, but they're really not. And so they're another group. And we found out about them because since they know about the skin trade and things like that from the organs, um, Zaid ends up enlisting their help and trying to track down Addie when she gets taken. Cause obviously they're trying to, she's completely off the radar. And so the only way to find Addie would be to find out about the different prostitution rings and about the different skin trade auctions and they're the ones who would know about the auctions know about the people who would do to the auctions and so that's how they got into it they're hilarious the brotherhood is so funny i'm so excited for them as well because they do give me like really great reverse harem vibes but again i'm going to just reiterate the point that this is an extremely extremely dark book now not too dark to the fact that i was sitting there being like oh, i've never read this before um okay that being said he does she does have sex with the handle of a knife that does get inserted inside of her hoo-ha. But the really big part of this is actually comes down to the fact of there is graphic on page rape of multiple characters, of all the girls that Addie has been kidnapped with for the skin trade by this woman named Francesca. All those people, you are, you are reading those rape scenes and you're reading about Addie being raped. And so that is their, her PTSD from it, her reliving from that. And not only that, but also one of the guys that ends up almost essentially buying her, this millionaire dude, as he is like raping her, he is cutting her like with a knife. Like it is not fun blood play. It is, he's literally slicing her open to the extent that she has to get like treatment afterwards and is also covered 
in all these scars as well. And so it's something that she's also 100% dealing with is the trauma from that. And a lot of her, once she does get rescued, when she eventually does escape and Zayd finds her and she gets rescued, she has a lot of PTSD from that that she's also dealing with throughout this book. And obviously, you know, she's gonna be touched by Zayd. She has, you know, two weeks that she's just in bed. And there's also a lot of time jumps while she is recovering. There's even time jumps while she's being kept in captivity at the skin trade place and being like groomed for to be like a proper, proper sex slave. She's being groomed to be a sex slave basically. And she's there for like months going underneath this and being traumatized with these other girls. And there's this thing called the culling that they have to eventually participate in, which is basically they get hunted, the, the people who want to potentially buy them, watch them run through the woods and try to kill them with an arrow. And if they don't get killed by the arrow and survive throughout the time span, then they can sit, then they get to live and they get to be auctioned off as sex slaves. But if you don't live through that, you die. And so that's something that you also read about. And not only that, but the girls who don't survive, who like get shot with the arrow during the culling, the girls who do survive the culling, then have to kill those girls who got shot as like, which is messed up. So Addie had to kill this girl that she knew because this girl got shot during the culling who saved her that she then had to kill with a rock because she messed up, messed up. I mean, it was all fine for me to read. But like I said, that is all 100% stuff that is on page. And so that can be something that people might be not okay with because it is so graphically detailed. I will say that after Zayd, you know, obviously does rescue Addie and she does manage to escape and gets found by him and everyone, there is also a period of this where, you know, from her PTSD and healing from that, he teaches her basically how to kill because she's now killed people. And she's also grappling with that. Like, how do I grapple with the fact that I killed people to escape? Like I murdered people. And he's like, yeah, but you met people who weren't good people either. And like, that's something that I've also had to deal with. Like, you'll be fine. And so she also learns how to kind of like reclaim everything. And not only that, but she reclaims like her sexuality. She reclaims all the murdering. She recaps, you know, the, the rape scenes that she had undergone and kind of having power and sit in the bedroom with Zayd. One of my favorite scenes is where he, she literally, he offers her handcuffs and she handcuffs him and has him like kneel on the bed. And like, she's the one who is in control of the situation. And his whole thing is like, you've always had control. You've just never been the one to take it. She goes, yeah, but you used to always take it from me. And he's like, yeah, but what you didn't understand was that if you tried to take it as well, I would have let you. He's like, you're the only person that I would always bow down to. You're the only person that I will ever kneel for. And you know, he does throughout this entire book. He's always like, refer to me as a God, regalala. And she's like, I have a God kneeling before me. And I was like, Oh my God, it was so good. Like watching him, like, cause their relationship in the first book is so sexual and that kind of CNC, like dubious consent of the first book that the second book, since so much of them is like reclaiming their relationship from more of like a very platonic standpoint of them just comforting one another and getting to know one another and kind of starting a relationship off on like a more technically normal foot from everything was also really interesting to see. There is, oh my God, he, when he loses her, he ends up getting a knife and he carves a rose into his chest as like a signifier of like fucking up. She then has him carve the same rose into her chest. They both have these roses carved into their chest with like a knife, but they also have sex while he carves that into her. So that is also a scene, FYI. I will say also, I'm just looking at some of my tabs and stuff because I'm trying to remember everything that I wanted to talk to you guys about, but one of the things I love about Sibby is that she has kind of brought in a lot of humor to everything. So like, cause this is such a dark book, you needed a character that was gonna be like that. Like for example, um, her parents get kidnapped and they go to go rescue her parents. And <laughs> what Sibby does is when they get down to this hallway, she's like, no one's creepier than me. And she walks up to this guy and this guy's like, putting a gun at her. He's like, put down your weapon. And Sibby's like, if you're gonna ask me to put down my weapon, you might as well just tell me to completely undress. You know what Sibby does? She just starts stripping. And this guy drops the gun because he's like, what, what, why is this bitch just stripping in front of me? Like not what I was expecting. And then she murders him naked. <laughs> I was like, yes. I was like, man, I love that girl so much. She was the best. Also Sibby of course is not on her meds. So she's still like imagining all of her henchmen and she's having sex with them, like with everyone else around. Every, so the, everyone is po dealing with poor Sibby, just trying to have sex everywhere all the time, but with herself. But she doesn't know that she's doing it with. Like she thinks her henchmen are there. And so she, she'll just start like having an orgy, but like not an actual orgy because it's just herself. Like in the middle of the living room, on the dining table, or like around them all the time. And they're all just like, oh my God, go, you can, <laughs> it is the 
funniest shit of my entire life watching her do that. And I think what I really like is also they obviously do, you know, this is taking place over months and months. They eventually do start capturing the people who were responsible for kidnapping Addie and all that kind of stuff and watching them also torture them. Like they end up taking the three people who put her through the culling and kidnapped her and make them go through their own culling, making them also run and then shoot them with arrows and murder them all, which is really dope. I really enjoyed that. Like she completely like reclaims everything in that standpoint which was really fun. Except for the fact that Sibby literally mutilates them like within a half an inch of their life, which you know, we, we love Sibby like that. I think what's also really interesting is like, not only that, but also Addie doesn't just like get over her trauma easily. It's something that does take place throughout the course of this, like the book from her getting rescued again and watching kind of, she has all these ups and down moments where she kind of is reclaiming herself and then she falls again into a deep depression and as things are changing, she doesn't know how to really handle it and kind of her being able to come full circle, I thought was really well handled as well. Yeah, so it takes 313, yeah, 50% of the book for him to rescue her from the beginning. So she is in captivity, she is secluded, she is being tortured for 300 pages straight. So you need to be okay with that if you do read this. We also do find out what Zaid's last name is. Zaid's last name is Meadows. His name is Zaid Meadows. That's how <laughs> boy's name. And I feel like that's always the case. I feel like they always give like the softest last names to these guys. And I actually really dig it. I was like, you know what? Tell me more about Zaid Meadows, 100%. Obviously I'm gonna finish the last 31 minutes. I'm 93% to the book. I think it's getting to the final point now where obviously they're going to finally find Claire, bring Claire to existence, you know, Mark's supposedly docile wife who is actually the mastermind behind everything but this has actually really surprised me i was not expecting the second half of the duet to even surprise me even more than the first half did and i actually definitely love it even further like if i had to it's going to be a five stars regardless no matter what i say book two is going to be a five stars i'd probably say that maybe part one is like a 4.5 five stars like i want to just give it all five stars to be quite honest with you obviously i'm going to finish it first before telling you that because maybe this last seven percent something awful will go wrong although i highly highly doubt that but I don't know, I'm so living for it. I just live for Sibby. I'm so excited for Sibby's book. Sibby's just such a crazy bitch and I'm so here for her. That is it. I'm gonna go sunbake, finish this book, and then I'll let you guys know how it all goes. I also just wanna say, I didn't mention this, they just get so unhinged at the end of this book. Like all three of them are just unhinged murdering people at this point. Like they end up kidnapping these people who are like, you guys have to help us. And this guy's like, I'm not helping you. And Zayd's just like, that's the thing. You don't have a choice. And it's like, they are just going left, right and center just to get revenge at this point. And I just love how unhinged it honestly gets. It is by far, it's, I, wouldn't, I don't know if it really is the darkest romance. Well, maybe because of all the on-page rape. But I've, I've read weirder things before. I've read, I've read weirder things before. I'd probably say that Satan's Affair is actually the most dark out of all three of these minus the rape because the rape is the darkest thing in my opinion that does happen in this book i mean she gets a gun inserted into her and she gets a knife inserted into her she also gets tied up to a tree and has sex that way so i guess it just depends but i feel like i don't know i w i was still thought it would have been like so dark to the extent that i would have been like ah oh, i don't like this but i am really liking it so i don't know if that says about me but you know I finished the duet. It is done. It is completed. We are finito. Um, just so we know, the way that I, you know what I find is the most interesting part of, you know, I'm gonna close this door because my parents are outside. I don't really want to say this that loudly. You know what the funniest thing is about this duet is he inserted, like I said, a knife into her. He inserted a gun into her. They've done many, many, many things. You know, they had bloody sex in a bathtub. Like they were both bleeding. And they got into a bathtub and the bathtub was bloody water basically and they had sex in it and it was like yeah all this stuff happened you know what the final piece de resistance you know how this book finally ends him sticking it in her butt it takes <laughs> it takes two 700 page books to lead up to it <laughs> i think this is this is the first time i have actually read a book that has made that be like the last like <gasps> that's the final thing that they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like so often that is something that like a lot of characters end up doing way earlier on. And like, this is the first time I've read that where it's been like, oh, that's like the final, like, oh my God. Like they do that and then he proposes to her. And she goes, is this my reward for like you loving me? Like, are you proposing because you love me? Are you proposing as like a reward to finally do it? <laughs> and I died. I was like, that is it. That is this book in a nutshell. Literally, it's so, ah, oh, I can't even. I live for it. My One of my really good friends, Kenzie, it's one of her favorite series and she's been dying me to read this. So she'd be like my friend that I've been texting the entire time I've been reading this and I love her to 
who death she's the best um but oh i'm so glad i finally read the series she's the one who really really was pushing me to read it too so i'm so thankful for that but oh my god this ends and you meet this guy named craven and then Sibby disappears because Sibby knows Craven, so I don't know what's going on there. But I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely freaking adored this series. It was the best thing I've read. It's like, I just, I keep saying that if you do like Tate James, you will like this. And it is a lot darker than Tate's, but at the same time, it's actually, it's actually very reminiscent of Tate's Hades Quartet because a lot of dark shit actually also happened in that. Um, this is still to an extent that's more, but... I would definitely say that they're very on par. And I do think that if you like one author, you will 100% like the other. I'm so stoked and so excited. I want to read more from H.G. Carlton. I want to buy the books. I want to have everything. I just want to hoe my entire ass out for this. I'm so excited that H.G. Carlton's going to be at a Polycon next year, which I'm going to, so I get to actually meet her and I am stoked. Um, so it's going to be great. I don't know, I'm just obsessed. And like, oh my gosh, she gets like a rose tattoo. I want to get a rose tattoo now. I'm not going to do that because like I just got another tattoo. My parents don't even like this tattoo, so... <laughs> It's all struggle busting over here. But oh, oh my god, I'm gonna be like in such a hangover after this. I'm gonna have to start a new vlog soon, and I'm just like, oh, my life. Okay, so do I think that the final verdict is do, do I think this is like the darkest romance? Kind of. I think that if you've never read a dark romance before, this will definitely like 100% take you out of your comfort zone because of the fact that, you know, he does stalk her and. There's CNC and Dubcon and a gun in her hoo-ha. And so I think that's kind of like the vinyl verdict. I think that if you have read the dark romances, this won't be like the darkest thing you'll have ever read. But if it is the first time you're kind of leaning into the genre, it would be a bit much. Like I think it's, it probably isn't like as messed up as, I mean, I haven't read Dinner Vipers yet, but I feel like it still wouldn't be as messed up as that is because I mean, I've heard some of the things that go on in that and it's like just weird shit, dude. But I don't know, I think it was really fun. And I think that if you do enjoy those other authors, then it'll be something that you enjoy, so. I don't know, that's my final verdict for the, having just read this entire <laughs> series now. Um, I don't know what else, I don't know what I want to do next for one of these vlogs. Let me know down below in the comments um, another series like Duet or anything like that I should do for one of these because I really enjoy doing them and I think it's fun to kind of give you guys all the spoilers and let you know how everything like finally ends and all that good stuff because it's just my favorite, so. Anyway, that is it. That is my Cat and Mouse Duet vlog. If you enjoyed this video, please like button down below. If you want to see more of me, Please go to my channel and don't forget to check me out over on TikTok and Instagram. And until next time, thanks a bunch everyone.